This is News 8 Now, this morning. It's a great feature to have because it, it makes it more convenient if you are in need of services. However, if it's unintentional, um, it is tying up our 911 line, which can create a concern for somebody who may really need to call 911. This building, I believe, serves the lowest income bracket, and those folks can't afford to go out and buy a portable air conditioning unit. Now we need to move forward on how to expand that water infrastructure and how do we protect it, right? It's really key. We don't want other people trying to stick straws down into that uncontaminated aquifer and potentially doing it in such a way that it would all be risked. Good morning, everyone. That was your morning eye-opener. I'm Sophia Pullman. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is Thursday, June 8th. And I was saying how oh, this week is just flying by, and I feel like mm -hmm. June's gonna fly by. And I say, yep. you know, it's the Fourth of July, and then Woo Fourth of July holiday. I know <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, less than a month now already for uh, for that Fourth of July holiday. So can't mm -hmm. wait for that. I know the it's weather's been, been nice. We yeah. got rid of some of the haze from the wildfires. Yeah. So. And you see New York, that was Bad. brutal yesterday. I know. My goodness, I was watching those earth cams from New York City and the skyline. You can't even see. You the really skyline. can't even see too much in front of you. Talk about poor visibility and bad air quality. Bad but breathing. yeah, exactly. But at least here, we're not dealing with that haze. And finally, we are getting a break from those poor air quality alerts. I know we've been dealing with that here for those past several days. Uh, luckily, we're getting a much needed break from that as we're not necessarily dealing with all that smoke and haze necessarily right now. But here's a look at that satellite and radar picture and you can see everything looking quiet. So some showers and cloudy skies to the west over portions of uh, Minnesota there. Current temperatures are into the 50s, 53 La Crosse, 38 Black River Falls, 38 as well in Sparta, 50 in Viroqua, 47 Prairie du Chien and 42 in Boscobel, 52 degrees in Winona. So a check now on your planner for the rest of the morning. Mostly sunny skies temperatures in the 50s and 60s and then warming up into the 70s this afternoon under mostly sunny skies and overall a pretty seasonal day in terms of our temperatures. Now for today, the allergens are high uh, for the grass and the pine for the pollen and symptom symptom index levels. The weed here is low. Same forecast for tomorrow. 102 is the highest pine pollen count this year and 49 is close to the highest grass pollen count of the year so far, and that comes from our allergy associates from La Crosse. Uh, stay tuned, I'll have a check on your full weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Derek. Let's get to some news this morning. According to an online jail roster, Adam Fravel is in the custody, in custody of Winona County Jail. Fravel is the father of Madeline Kinsbury's children. The 29 year old is being held on police charges of second degree murder with intent not premeditated. According to a release from the Winona Police Department, a Fillmore County deputy found human remains just north of Mabel, Minnesota. The identity of the remains has not been confirmed yet by a medical examiner, but because of the discovery, law enforcement arrested Fravel on probable cause in connection to Kinsbury's disappearance. Kinsbury has been missing since March 31st. The Winona Police Department is planning on hosting a press conference today. News 8 Now will be there and will have more information as it becomes available. As Kinsbury has been missing for more than two months, her community is coming together to help her family. There's a big benefit happening this weekend for Madeline Kinsbury. The money from the fundraiser will go towards taking care of Madeline's children. According to one of the organizers of the benefit, the children are in the care of Madeline's parents as they fight a legal battle to keep the kids in their care. And she says auction donations are pouring in. Keeping those children safe. That is what the benefit is about. Donations have come in from many states away um, and large donations. Right now my garage is full, my porch is full, my truck is full, and not just mine, there's three other girls helping me. The benefit happens Saturday. It's at the Watoka Tavern and Reception Hall. Doors open at 3 in the afternoon. The silent auction starts at 4. The event will also have raffles, door prizes, and games to win other prizes. A live auction begins at 715. A man accused of invading privacy and two counts of child sexual assault 
was back in court. 31 year old Shauncy Turner was enter has entered a not guilty plea to all counts. Judge Elliot Levine agreed to lower Turner's bond from $10,000 cash to $500 cash, citing the fact that Turner has no criminal history. According to a criminal complaint, Turner touched children under the age of 13 inappropriately and used a phone to try recording children in a bathroom. Crews were called to a brush fire in Vernon County. Fire crews from Viroqua along with Tri-State Ambulance and the Vernon County Sheriff were at the Duck Egg County Forest off Irish Ridge Road. Officials on scene told News 8 Now they were using ATVs to get the fire put out. We'll have more information when it's available. The number of unintentional calls to local emergency services has gone up and cell phones are to blame. From January to May 2023, there has been a 75% increase in unintentional 911 calls, and in May, 40% of the total calls were unintentional. Officials are saying the increase is due to the 911 setting on Android cell phones that are meant to assist in a time of emergency. Surprise, usually. Um, most people don't even know that their phones are, are calling 911. Um, I have heard anecdotal information that some phones will sound some type of alarm or a countdown prior to initiating the call, but that's not always heard, especially if you're driving in a car with your phone in the cup holder and you've got road noise and the radio turned up. Officials are encouraging the public to go into the settings of your phone, go to the emergency SOS settings and opting out. They say currently the biggest issues are with Android smartphones, specifically Samsung. But last year they had issues with Apple watches and the crash detection. It's a great feature to have because it, it makes it more convenient if you are in need of services. However, if it's unintentional, um, it is tying up our 911 line, which can create a concern for somebody who may really need to call 911. This last weekend between Friday 6 a.m. and Monday 6 a.m., there were 151 calls to 911 for service in La Crosse in comparison to last year's 37 calls during the weekend. With temperatures rising, energy costs continue to rise with them. Lowering energy costs is now the priority for Dairyland Power co-op at its annual meeting in La Crosse. The co-op could be looking more towards solar and nuclear for energy sources. Dairyland cited a recent study that found 55% of Americans favor nuclear energy. Miss America Grace Stanky, who has a degree in nuclear engineering from UW-Madison, is one of those supporters. Energy costs can be reduced by using nuclear. Nuclear is, is a great source of that baseload power, and right now we're struggling with maintaining a reliable source of baseload power. Dairyland provides energy for 24 electric distribution co-ops and 27 municipal utilities across four states. Residents of an apartment building in downtown La Crosse say they have been without air conditioning for the last two months. The group that owns the Grand River Station apartments say the units are cooling down as we speak, but tenants who spoke to News 8 Now's Emily Haugen say all these weeks without air came with consequences. As the sun beats down on La Crosse City streets, behind closed doors in Grand River Station, the heat gets trapped in the building. The heat is much more potent. My apartment was, I think it was at 93 at one point, and then it got up to like 97, almost 100. Neighbor Julia McDermott says the air conditioning in her building has been out for two months now. Each consecutive day of really high heat, it's gotten hotter and hotter in the building. Leaving the building's 72 units with sweltering heat. As a solution, management put a portable unit in the community room. But, you know, people can't sleep up there. <laughs> um, McDermott also says management suggested tenants get their own portable units. She did, but it cost her. I've spent now over $500 between <laughs> portable and window units and fans. McDermott says for some of her neighbors, paying that price isn't possible. This building, I believe, serves the lowest income bracket, and those folks can't afford to go out and buy a portable air conditioner unit. It's heat that resident Odessa Whitehead says has become unbearable. I had to go to the emergency room, ER. I had to uh, get some IV. Because I was dehydrated, I woke up, I was just delusional, I was really sick. After her health scare, she's moved to a hotel. And so we, we had to get out. 
For many other tenants, sweating it out has been life-threatening. She had to get her mother out. She's 85, and she actually went in the hospital, and um, she almost died. Weeks later, an end is in sight. The air is coming back on now. But Whitehead says that wasn't soon enough. It should not have took seven weeks, seven weeks to get this done. That's just unacceptable. Gorman and Company, who owns the Grand River Station Apartments, told News 8 in an email that supply chain issues delayed the delivery of the parts needed to fix the issue. They say the delivery delay played a role in how long it took to cool down the unit. Gorman and Company representatives say they will not compensate people who bought window units. In 2020, the town of Campbell's wells were found to be contaminated with PFAS. A new well was recently tested by Davi Engineering. Community members gathered to hear the results. The well, located in Wardwell Park, was drilled deeper than the current wells to avoid the contaminated water. The results of the test drill show no PFAS or other sources of contamination. According to engineer Michael Davi, the new water source is separated from sand and gravel and is under pressure. Now we need to move forward on how to expand that water infrastructure and how do we protect it, right? It's really key. We don't want other people trying to stick straws down into that uncontaminated aquifer and potentially doing it in such a way that it would all be risked. Campbell leaders are hoping to have two wells back up. They also want to protect the well in Wardwell Park by working with the DNR and the La Crosse County. Still ahead on your morning news, Taco Bell is reworking their crunch wrap recipe to be vegan friendly. And the latest survey from Bankrate.com shows that Americans are getting tired of tipping culture. That and more coming up this morning. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. It was a super surprise for kids at the Dell Children's Medical Center as some of their favorite comic book heroes repelled down the building for Superhero Day. The crime-fighting superheroes, including Austin police officers dressed as Spider-Man, Black Panther, and Wonder Woman. They took on familiar villains ready to bring chaos to the hospital. The superhero heroes repelled down the hospital walls to save the day to the delight of the young patients. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning is after the break. Just a few passing clouds this morning with the majority of those clouds and even some showers and storms are back towards the west while we here on the other hand are looking mainly clear. Dog walking conditions this morning, a few clouds uh, as you head out there, mostly sunny for the afternoon, followed by the evening looking nice and clear as well. Current temperatures as you head out the door here this morning, mainly in the 50s, 52 Winona, 53 La Crosse and 53 as well in Eau Claire. There are some colder exceptions, Black River Falls and Sparta into the upper 30s as you head out the door. Your zone forecast today in La Crosse County calls for highs to reach those upper 70s to low 80s. A pretty seasonable day today in La Crosse County in general with highs around 81 today in Shelby and also in Barry Mills. Highs will reach 78 in Soldiers Grove today and 75 in Westby, 77 in Stoddard. We're looking at highs at 77 in Arcadia here today with a high 78 degrees in Sparta. Meanwhile, 77 in Whitehall. Highs into the upper 70s for Eau Claire today. 79 degrees here for you. Just a mix of sun and clouds. If you have any plans outside, maybe around the backyard, around the pool, looking at uh, 81 degrees under those partly cloudy skies in general here this afternoon. Now stay tuned. We may have some rain chances uh, later this week. I'll talk about that coming up in the full weather forecast in a few minutes. In your consumer news this morning, if you're headed near Joshua Tree in California this week, you may want to plan a detour to one of the cheesiest destinations in America. The Cheese It Stop features a store stocked full of the famous cheese crackers and other merchandise, while the pumps outside propel bags of Cheese Its into your car through the window. The shop is only open now through Sunday. You could be seeing something new on Taco Bell's menu, something vegan. Taco Bell is saying it's testing a vegan version of their popular crunch wrap. The new version includes a plant-based protein topped with two vegan sauces wrapped in a crunchy tostada shell. Taco Bell has appealed to vegetarians and vegans for years. In 2019, it even rolled out a vegetarian menu. Taco Bell says nearly a quarter of its sales last year came from vegetarian options. 
And Coca-Cola is launching a new limited edition flavor, but what the actual flavor is remains a mystery. Coca-Cola Ultimate will be marked to gamers. The soda maker partnered with Riot Games, which publishes the game League of Legends. Ultimate will be available in U.S. and Canadian stores starting June 12th for a limited time in regular and zero sugar varieties. Like most of Coke's other limited edition beverages, the actual flavor will remain under wraps. That tip jar is starting to sound a little empty. A new survey from Bankrate.com finds Americans are growing weary of opening their wallets with men and Gen Zers among the worst tippers. A traditional display of gratitude isn't feeling the love these days. A new survey from Bankrate.com finds two-thirds of Americans have a negative view about tipping. I think it's like we're just overpaying everywhere. Bankrate found tipping has been dipping steadily over the past several years in frequency and amount for services like sit-down restaurants, hairstylists, food delivery, and taxi drivers. Gen Zers, millennials, men, they tend to be the worst tippers. I think inflation is a big part of it. I think money is tight for a lot of people. They feel like they have less to spare. There may be less to spare, but tipping prompts are everywhere. 32% of adults say they're annoyed by those pre-entered tip screens. And there's even self-service and pickup confusion. Just picking up a cup of coffee or I'm picking up a bagel or I'm picking up something from a convenience store. I see like an option to tip there too, which I feel I don't know what to do there, right? I think a lot of people resent some of these trends. Um, but I also don't think it's going away anytime soon. 41% of survey respondents said businesses should be paying their employees more instead of passing that buck to customers. Workers did deserve a higher pay rate. If you're inclined to tip, 20% is a good rule of thumb for a sit-down meal or a cab ride or stylist service. More than one-third of people say they feel good paying it forward. Americans carrying less cash on hand also accounts for some of that tipping problem. Certain businesses give employees personal QR codes for cash-free tips. That's it for your morning consumer news. Let's check in with Derek in today's forecast. All right, thanks for that, Sophia. We're starting off this morning on a mostly sunny sky here, as you can see behind me there from City Cam 8 in downtown La Crosse. 53 degrees is the temperature, 57, however, downtown. So we're seeing that 53 degree reading in at the La Crosse airport. So that's why it's a little bit different here downtown where it's a little bit warmer. East winds at 5 and the current conditions in the north and Eau Claire. Also looking clear, sunny here as well, 53 being the temperature. East northeast winds light at 6 miles an hour. All right, so those current temperatures as you had out the door mainly in the 50 some spots black river falls at 40 38 degrees currently in sparta 37 in Voltfield. so there are some well, colder exceptions back towards the east but really the rest of us here into those 50s low 60s with highs today into the upper 70s to low 80s so a check now on your planner seven o'clock 56 and partly cloudy mostly sunny 72 at noon and then lots of sunshine at four with temperatures at 77 73 and it's still clear as we head into early this evening high pressure at the surface here is building across the upper Midwest and that's going to help keep our weather in check here for today and already this morning we're starting off on a clear note with just a few passing clouds here to deal with. Now the weather is beautiful here over these next couple of days but you know we could definitely use the uh, uh, rain here. Uh, some beneficial rain is needed here in part in portions of the uh, Cooley region, the Chippewa Valley and also portions of our southern communities under abnormally uh, dry condition right now. So not necessarily a drought but uh, definitely could use some rain. Unfortunately we're not really looking at a whole lot of rain chances with the exception of this weekend and I'll show you why here but high pressure though here first is going to continue to influence our weather giving us very dry and stable weather conditions to work with over these uh, next couple of days including the day tomorrow. Now we are watching this cold front to the north that's forecast to move its way south and uh, that is going to be giving us some possible rain chances here as we head into this weekend and at the same time it may actually give us some slightly cool temperatures for us to work with as well. You'll see that here on the eight day forecast that Saturday and Sunday does have a chance of showers and thunderstorms with it and maybe even into early next week on Monday as well. Highs go from the 80s on Saturday down to the 70s on Sunday and in the low 70s on Monday. So there could be the temperature change there from that front with chances of rain. We'll definitely be keeping our eyes on that as some spots definitely do need it. 
Other than that, just a mix of clouds and sunshine over the next several days and uh, highs into the 70s and 80s and lows into the 50s and 60s. Stay with us. We're back with much more news and weather still to come on News 8 Now this morning. We're taking a quick break with a look what happened on this day in history for June 8th. We'll be right back. The Wisconsin High School Baseball State Tournament is next week. The brackets were released last night. We'll get to that in a bit, but we'll start with the first place Brewers. The crew has won four of its last five, and Milwaukee looking for another one at home last night against Baltimore. Brewers looking to make it two in a row over the Orioles. Willie Adamas back in the lineup for Milwaukee, and welcome back, Willie. Adamas wasting no time. First inning, this ball ain't coming back. It's one nothing Brewers. And how about the hero from two nights ago, Joey Weimer? Picking up right where he left off, a walk-off in the 10th on Tuesday. And last night, a two-run blast in the third makes it 3-0 Milwaukee. Weimer was just getting started in the fourth. He fights one off in the right for an RBI single. That makes it 4-0 crew. Then in the seventh, Brewers blow it open, and Weimer with the exclamation point. This ball absolutely hammered to left. Two-run shot makes it 10-0 Brewers. Four for four, five RBIs for Weimer on the night. All Brewers, they get the win, 10 to two. Twins looking to snap their three-game skid, taking on the Rays. Tampa strikes first in the second, thanks to Isaac Paredes. The big man sends one deep to left for a solo shot. It's one nothing Rays. But in the ninth, some clutch hitting from the Twins. Runners on the corners for Royce Lewis. He comes up big, that ties the game at one. But in the bottom of the ninth, Randy Arozarena unties it with one swing of the bat and the Rays Walk it off. Twins drop a heartbreaker as they fall for the fourth straight time. 2-1 is your final. With the NBA Finals going on right now, it's hard not to think about the Bucks. Their promising season came to an end in April, but a lot's changed over the last couple of months. When the Bucks take the floor later this year, they'll have a new leader on the sidelines. The Bucks officially welcoming new head coach Adrian Griffin to Milwaukee this week. Griffin replaces Mike Budenholzer, who spent five years with the Bucks bringing the first NBA title to Milwaukee in 50 years. And now Griffin looks to take over a team that had high hopes going into the playoffs this season. He says this team is eager to finish the job next year. I had an opportunity to reach out to all the players, and that was the common theme from the players, that they are hungry. Right? And, they, and, you know, that's kind of going to be our motto this year. You know, we're going to put in the work. We're not going to take anything for granted. And, you know, we're gearing up for April, May, and June. Griffin spent the last six seasons in Toronto as an assistant coach with the Raptors. What a day it was on the diamond for the Blue Golds Tuesday. Aquinas opened up bright and early with a shutout win over the Scenic Bluffs champ Bangor. And the Blue Golds kept it going in the nightcap. A 4-2 win over Cuba City. Aquinas is headed to the state tournament in Appleton next week. It'll be the Blue Golds' first appearance there since 2017. Here's how it all breaks down for our area teams. The WIAA announcing last night how the teams will be seeded next week in Appleton. In Division Three. Aquinas gets the overall number one seed. Blue Golds will take on Random Lake Tuesday in the semifinals. In Division Four, the Bulldogs are headed to the state tournament. Ithaca gets the two seed and a date with Edgar in the semis on Tuesday. And in Division Two, Altoona is headed to the state tournament for the first time in 13 years. Railroaders get the three seed. They'll take on St. Thomas More in the semifinals on Wednesday. That's going to do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. Expect more. Former President Donald Trump remains the clear frontrunner to be the Republican presidential nominee in 2024, but the field of contenders is growing by the day. Natalie Brandt has the latest from Washington, D.C. Given, much will be Former Vice President Mike Pence made it official in Iowa. Before God and my family, I'm announcing that I'm running for President of the United States of America. He's casting himself as a conservative alternative to his former boss, Donald Trump, who he's distanced himself from since the January 6th Capitol attack. On that fateful day, President Trump's words were reckless. They endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol. 
Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is also now formally in the race and taking aim at the man he once supported and even served as his transition chair in 2016. The reason I'm going after Trump is twofold. One, he deserves it. And two, it's the way to win. Trump fired back online, calling Christie a failed governor, writing, this time it won't be any different. Trump has a sizable edge in just about every early poll, including those in New Hampshire, where voters are already gearing up for the first GOP primary early next year. There's a lot out there, a lot of uh, Republicans. I think a lot of people are uh, kind of discouraged with Trump being the front runner, and uh, it's going to be exciting. While some GOP voters are looking for something new, Linda Rafferty says she's ready to reelect the former president. I thought he did a lot for this country because he's not a politician. He's a patriot. Doug Burgum! And add one more name to the growing list of presidential hopefuls. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum is also officially joining the field. Pence said President Trump on January 6th made him choose between Trump and the Constitution. He says he chose the Constitution and always will. The legislature is planning to stop the governor's plans to require seventh graders to be vaccinated against meningitis. There is no current requirement for meningitis vaccinations for students. The GOP controlled legislature's vote would also make it easier for parents to get an exception from a children chicken pox, excuse me, vaccine requirement. Some parents complained at a public hearing that the proposed requirements violate their liberties. State health officials say the requirements are to protect students health. Republicans in the legislature are also approving bills protecting access to gas powered vehicles. These bills are designed to stop the state from following an example like California, where state law now requires all new vehicles to be powered by electricity or hydrogen by 2035. Governor Evers could veto the bill. He said back in April he didn't believe banning gas engines was necessary. As shared revenue talks continue, Wisconsin's Assembly Speaker says he's willing to toss provisions related to Milwaukee to get the bill through. The suggestion would threaten an increase in state aid for the county and city of Milwaukee. The city is facing bankruptcy by 2025. If there's no agreement this week, he says he wants to proceed with everything else in the bill to other municipalities in the state. A package of Republican authorized bills on unemployment is heading to Governor Evers' desk. The bills are a response to voters approving a non-binding referendum on whether able-bodied adults should look for work to receive benefits. State law already requires that. Right now, welfare recipients have to perform more work search activities every week. Senator Brad Pfaff told us that these bills don't address real employment barriers like the high cost of child care. It's difficult for people, women and families, to enter the workforce when they lack reliable options for child care. Pfaff pointed to Minnesota signing a bill for paid family and medical leave as the kind of action that would help Wisconsin's workforce problem. Evers vetoed almost identical legislation during his first term and will likely do the same again. The American Family Golf Championship is set to tee off on Friday at University's Ridge in, Minis in Madison. And there is a lot that goes into preparing the fairways and greens to get ready for the event. Kyle Pozorski has the details. The tee boxes, fairways and greens at University's Ridge are almost ready for the course's largest annual event, the AmFam Championship. From a player's playing condition, it's uh, first class and the, and the best uh, the best of the best. Nate Pocris has been the tournament director since the event's inception in 2016. He says there's many complexities which go into preparing the course. Think of going to any other sp permanent sports stadium, whether it's American Family Field in Milwaukee or any other sporting venue, and those structures are permanent. Uh, we create that at a venue that wasn't designed for it. From LED signage to seating galleries and everything green, many man hours go into putting together an event which only takes place over three days. It takes six weeks ultimately to build tournament and all our structure, one week of activity, and then it takes three weeks to tear down all our venues and, and those structures move on to other events around the country. Lead groundskeeper Phil Davidson tells me the crews at U Ridge have been working around the clock to make it all possible. Well, I just don't think people know how much time we put into it. I mean, we're here from sun up to sundown 
for weeks on end just trying to, to get ready for this. He says while the AmFam Championship is their largest event, taking care of the course is no different than any normal day for them. We know how to maintain a golf course, so that's what we're doing here. We just kind of take it to a, a bigger degree when we, we put on a tournament. Opening ceremonies take place on Friday at 8.15, followed by the first tee time at 8.45. Here's Derek to tell us what to expect in our morning commute. All right, thanks for that, Sophia. We're looking at mostly clear skies here this morning across the Cooley region. Showers and cloud cover are back towards our west. Our current temperatures as you head out the door are mainly in the 50s, 53 in La Crosse, 53 as well in Eau Claire, and temperatures in Winona are currently at 54 degrees. So the forecast overall today, 81 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and overall a pretty seasonable day here to work with as well, with wind speeds not a factor at all, light and variable, and wind speeds for tonight also light and variable to work with as well with a temperature temperature of 53 degrees, which is slightly cool for this time of the year under mostly clear skies. Now mowing conditions here, if you haven't done it here yet, uh, 60 degrees at 8 o'clock, feeling comfortable at noon, 72 and mostly sunny. And by 5 p.m., we're still looking very sunny. Temperatures at 78 degrees, just an all around day to go out and get out the outdoor activities knocked out, including some of that mowing as temperatures will be pretty comfortable here throughout the day and also into the afternoon. Stay with us. I'll be back with a check on your full weather forecast coming up after the break. We'll be right back. Well, it shows a nice clear start here this morning, as you can see behind me there from City Cam 8 in downtown La Crosse. 53 degrees is the temperature at the airport, but a little bit warmer downtown currently at 57 degrees here at WKBT. We are looking at 10 mile visibility now. Easterly winds pretty light at five miles an hour. Current conditions to the north in Eau Claire, slightly cool, 53. Uh, lots of sunshine here. East northeast winds light at six miles an hour, and our current temperatures are now into the 50s. Uh, we are looking at the 40s in Black River Falls, 38 currently, however, in Sparta and also into the 30s in areas like Volkfield, 53 in Viroqua and 47 down south in Prairie du Chien. Our forecast highs today, check this out, very seasonable and very comfortable. Upper 70s, some spots like La Crosse County could reach the low 80s here this afternoon. A check now on your planner, 56 and partly cloudy to start, 72 and mostly sunny by noon today and then lots of sunshine really throughout the rest of the day and also as we head into early this evening. High pressure has currently uh, positioned itself at the surface around the Great Lakes and also around northern Wisconsin. This is going to be responsible for producing dry and just overall stable air mass across much of the area. In fact, you can see that here with just a few passing clouds with the rain and cloud cover back to the west. However, speaking of rain, you know, we could definitely use it. We're not necessarily under a drought, but this is the latest drought monitor coming in and you can see areas like the Chippewa Valley down south into our southern communities, including La Crosse County, all under an abnormally dry condition. So in other words, yeah, we could definitely use some beneficial rains. Unfortunately, I don't really see any rain chances up until this weekend, and that's because high pressure that we mentioned before is going to continue to build across the upper Midwest and continue to influence our weather here through today. And also as we head into tonight, conditions remain quiet thanks to that area of high pressure. But you'll notice it's going to continue to move away towards the south and away from the Cooley region as we head into the day tomorrow. And our attention will start to turn to what's happening coming next, which is this cold front that will be positioned to our north as we head into the day tomorrow. Now it's forecast to continue moving south and with it could bring us some moisture that could lead to showers and thunderstorm development as we head into this weekend. So we'll keep our eyes on that because again, we could definitely use some of that rain, especially in some spots around the Cooley region. But other than that, the temperatures are expected to drop here just a little bit going from the 80s on Saturday to the 70s behind the front on Sunday with some lingering showers perhaps. And then by early next week, Monday, a chance of a few showers and thunderstorms possible with temperatures dropping into the low 70s during the afternoon on Monday. Then we're back in the upper 70s to low 80s for the rest of next week with lows in the 50s and low 60s. In our morning buzz report, Tom Holland may not be swinging onto any new movie sets anytime soon. The actor told Extra he was taking a break from acting. Holland says he is taking a year off after his latest experience in the upcoming Apple TV Plus miniseries, The Crowded Room. The miniseries follows a young man's arrest for a crime and the investigator who solves the mystery behind it. Holland told Extra that, he show, that the show broke him and that now he wants to be, quote, a regular bloke from Kingston and just relax. We'd like to hear your accounts of what happened. I like to call them your mind movies. 
Every guest is a suspect in the official trailer for season two of the after party. In this season of the Who Done It, a wedding is ruined when a groom is murdered. Tiffany Haddish returns as De Detective Danner. She must solve the mystery by questioning suspects who have their own unique retelling of the events. The after party returns to Apple TV Plus on July 12th. Hey, why are you here? I got this situation where I need your help. I need bad friends. Old friends and new, including Megan Fox and 50 Cent, unite to save the world from terrorists with nuclear missiles in the fourth Expandables movie. Jason Statham and Sylvester Stallone return when Expandables with a four in place of an A blasts into theaters September 22nd. One of hip hop's most iconic figures got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Tupac Shakur, the rapper, died in 1996, just five years after starting his career. In that time, he left a permanent mark on hip hop with his poetic lyrics and activism. The California Love singer was selected to receive the star 10 years ago. According to the Walk of Fame's Twitter account, it took this, his family this long to set a date. That's incredible that he got honored like that, too. The Hall of Fame? Yeah. Have you ever been to Hollywood? I haven't. Have I, you? I went and did, like, the, saw all the stars that on is, the ground. I always thought that was so cool. It's really cool, and they definitely hype it up on TV. It was a little underwhelming, okay. I think. So it's maybe just a little overrated, then? Yeah. You would think? Okay. I, I mean, it's still Fair cool enough. to see, but I wouldn't, like, yeah. go back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we had to break, it's time to look at today's Look Who's A. So we do have one birthday today, and we are celebrating a happy eighth birthday to Ireland today. And she's got two dogs, or three dogs, I should say, uh, two fish, and loves horses and unicorns. She is a pet lover. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> happy birthday. If you know a special someone turning eight months, eight years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. That's right. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for the Submit Pictures button underneath the Home tab on our website. Stay with us. We have everything you need to know today in five minutes or less. Your morning news now is up next. According to an online jail roster, Adam Frable is in custody with Winona County Jail. Frable is the father of Madeline Kinsbury's children. The 29-year-old is being held on police charges of second-degree murder with intent not premeditated. According to a release from the Winona Police Department, a Fillmore County deputy found human remains just north of Mabel, Minnesota. The identity of the remains has not been confirmed yet by a medical examiner, but because of the discovery, law enforcement arrested Fravel on probable cause in connection to Kinsbury's disappearance. Kinsbury has been, has been missing since March 31st. The Winona Police Department is planning on hosting a press conference today. News 8 Now will be there and will have more information as it becomes available. As Kinsbury has been missing for more than two months, her community is coming together to help her family. There's a big benefit happening this weekend for Madeline Kinsbury. The money from the fundraiser will go towards taking care of Madeline's children. According to one of the organizers of the benefit, the children are in the care of Madeline's parents as they fight a legal battle to keep the kids in their care. She says auction donations are pouring in. Keeping those children safe. That is what the benefit is about. Donations have come in from many states away um, and large donations. Right now my garage is full, my porch is full, my truck is full. And not just mine, there's three other girls helping me. The benefit happens Saturday. It's at the Watoka Tavern and Reception Hall. Doors open at 3 in the afternoon. A silent auction starts at 4. The event will have raffles, door prizes, and games to win other prizes. A live auction begins at 7.15. A man accused of invading privacy in two counts of child sexual assault was back in court. 31-year-old Sonsi Turner has entered a not guilty plea to all counts. Judge Elliot Levine agreed to lower Turner's bond from $10,000 cash to $500 cash, citing the fact that Turner has no criminal history. According to a criminal complaint, Turner touched children under the age of 13 inappropriately and used a phone to try recording children in a bathroom. The number of unintentional calls to local emergency services has gone up and cell phones are to blame. From January to May 2023, there has been a 75% increase in unintentional 911 calls and in May, 40% of the total calls were unintentional. 
Officials are saying the increase is due to the 911 setting on Android cell phones that are meant to assist in a time of emergency. Surprise, usually. Um, most people don't even know that their phones are, are calling 911. Um, I have heard anecdotal information that some phones will sound some type of alarm or a countdown prior to initiating the call, but that's not always heard, especially if you're driving in a car with your phone in the cup holder and you've got road noise and the radio turned up. Officials are encouraging the public to go into the settings of your phone, go to the emergency SOS settings and opting out. They say currently the biggest, biggest issues are the Android smartphones, specifically Samsung. But last year they had issues with Apple watches and the crash detection. In 2020, the town of Campbell's wells were found to be contaminated with PFAS. A new well was tested recently by Davi Engineering Company. Community members gathered to hear the results. The well, located in Wardwell Park, was drilled deeper than the current wells to avoid the contaminated water. The results of the test drill show no PFAS or other sources of contamination. According to engineer Michael Davi, the new water source is separated from sand and gravel and is under pressure. Now we need to move forward on how to expand that water infrastructure and how do we protect it, right? It's really key. We don't want other people trying to stick straws down into that uncontaminated aquifer and potentially doing it in such a way that it would all be risked. Campbell leaders are hoping to have two wells back up. They also want to protect the well in Wardwell Park by working with the DNR and La Crosse County. As you head out the door this morning, temperatures are into the 50s, but then warming up into the 60s by the 9 o'clock hour under mostly sunny skies. Temperatures during this afternoon mainly into the 70s, some spots hitting those low 80s with seasonable afternoon temperatures and overall lots of sunshine here once again. Same story for tomorrow, slightly warmer with a high of 84. A chance of showers and thunderstorms though this weekend thanks to a cold front, which by the way may also lower the temperatures a bit into the 70s for Sunday, also into Monday. But you know, hey, we could definitely use the rain here. Yeah, Saturday through Monday, it would be nice to get some rain Absolutely. just because of all the stories we've been doing on yeah. the farmers. Otherwise, I would not be saying that. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. And thank you for watching News 8 Now. Don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on News8000.com. We will have the latest updates to today's top stories on News 8 Now at noon. Have a great morning, everyone. Thank you for watching News 8.